Books. I'm Linda Esso, and I can't wait to share with you some new books from the Youth Services Department. Yep, happy spring and happy new books. Let's dig in. Put this aside. So, there are always so many new books in our department. It's hard to pick and choose which ones to show, but I do the best I can. Um, now, remember that all of our new books, when you come into our department, the new books have the green dots on. These are the ones that are brand new, cataloged, on the shelves, ready for you to come in and check out. Don't even have to wait. Well, of course, unless they're not in. These are the new uh, young adult. The young adult uh, books are gonna have the red sticker, the red dot. And new, making them new, would be having the green dot as well. So, the green dot is what um, uh, the, uh, makes them stand out as new. New month, new books. So let's do it. Well, I have this in my hand. We might as well start with this. This is a new young adult book. It is called uh, Fools in Love, French Twists on Romantic Tales, edited by Ashley Herring Blake and Rebecca Potos. And it is filled, it has many, many um, stories. And <laughs> love the theme, you're gonna crack up when you see the next book. Um, this is just filled with different love stories. Let's see what we have to say. Enemies to lovers, the fake date, love triangles, best friends, mistaken identities, and missed connections. These are all the things that make up the perfect romance or romantic comedy. Then add super powerful flora, a connection between a superhero and his nemesis, a sled race through snow-capped mountains, a golf tournament, catching the wrong rideshare, and even the end of the world. This collection of genre-bending and original stories shows how love always finds a way, whether it's at a family party or transcending space and time. Fools in love. We've got that one. Well, keeping with the theme, which cracks me up, just pretty random though, um, this is by Jacqueline Perkins and it's called How Not to Fall in Love. That one was all about the love stories. This one is How Not to Fall in Love by, again, Jacqueline Perkins. And this one, um, again, another young adult book. Um, after years of watching squabbles break out over wedding plans, Harper thinks romance is a marketing tool, nothing more. Her best friend, Theo, is her opposite. One date and he's already dreaming of happily ever afters. He also plays the accordion, makes uh, chain mail for Ren Festers, hangs out on, um, in a windmill-shaped treehouse, cries over rom-coms, and takes his word of the day calendar very seriously. When Theo's sh shocked to find himself nursing his umpteenth heartbreak, Harper offers to teach him how not to fall in love. Sounds like a funny one. So, another new young adult. Let's go through one more young adult and I've got some good juvenile. The a Reckless Kind, Carly Heath. You know, sometimes they say, yeah, well, of course, never judge a book by its cover, but you know, they really do their best to make these covers enticing. Um, this one, let's see what we've got here. Well, this one, I'm glad I opened it up because it's just really um, honestly, been uh, read already. Um, and it's 1904 on an island just west of Norway and Asta Hedstrom doesn't want to marry her odious betrothed Mills. But her mother believes she uh, should be grateful for the possibility of any domestic future given her single-sided deafness, unconventional appearance, and even stranger notions. Um, let's see. 
Asta would rather spend her life performing in the village theater with her fellow outcasts. Her boyfriend Gunnar Fugelstad, okay, here's a name for you, and his secret boyfriend, wealthy Erend Fournier. But the situation takes a dire turn when, Neil, when Nils lashes out in jealousy, gravely injuring Gunnar, etc., etc. The Reckless Kind uh, by Carly Heath. Let's move on to some juvenile, shall we? Okay. This, I just, I love the title. Of course, you know, you look at the covers of these books. Um, this is called Worst Case Colin by Rebecca Caprera. And um, uh, it, it looks like a good one. Like I said, these are brand new, ready to be checked out. And it's kind of hard for me to cut, you know, keep caught up with reading all of them. Um, so I'm just as interested as you are. It's no wonder his best friends, Liam and Georgia, nickname him Worst Case Colin. Ever since his mom died in a fluke accident, 12-year-old Colin wonders what might have happened if someone had been better prepared. So now he keeps a worst case scenario handbook outlining how to overcome everything from avalanches to riptides to even a bad case of halitosis. But there's no chapter in his handbook about how to avoid bullies at school, how to hide his dad's troubling hoarding habits from everyone, or how to tell Georgia that he might like her as more than a friend. Even with Liam and Georgia by his side, Colin feels he can't tell anyone what's really going on in his life. Worst case, Colin. Now moving on, um, Aaron and Trotta Kelly, uh, these kids from Fawn Creek. It's hard to stay true until the end. Uh, she is a popular author. Uh, the last book that I read, well, actually, I'm looking at her, her list, um, Hello Universe. Highly recommend, a very good book. Um, you Go First, that was um, another one of hers. Uh, we Dream of Space. The Land of Forgotten Girls, etc. Well, this is her newest one, and I'm sure, like her others, she always does a good job. Every day in Fawn Creek, Louisiana is exactly the same. And every kid at Fawn Creek K through 12 is the same as last year and the year before that. Well, except for Rennie Dean. She moved to Grand St. Lodge, the next town over. Now, good riddance as far as best friends since forever. Dorothy Dossett and Grayson Browsart are concerned. Rennie Dean was never all that nice to them. So, every day in Fawn Creek, Louisiana is exactly the same. And every kid in seventh grade is part of the same group they've been in since forever. Uh, the self-proclaimed God Squad and um, all the, and the jocks, the Fawn Creek royalty. Every day in Fawn Creek, Louisiana is exactly the same until it isn't. Another good one. Let me share one last one with you for our new month, new books of April. This one's called Codename Serendipity by Amber Smith. Um, the cover, and I always laugh to say, who doesn't like a book with dogs? So they throw the dog on the cover, of course, makes it even more special. 11 year old Sadie Mitchell Rosen doesn't fit in, not at school. Her best and only friend moved away and no one wants to hang out with the kid who wears mismatched socks or who can't pay attention and not at home. Her two moms don't understand her, and lately she can't get along with her older brother. Now, Grants has moved in, and no one is telling her the truth about why. Then Sadie meets a stray dog named, I love it, Dewey. Get it? Perfect. There is a book called uh, Dewey the Library Cat. Get it? The Dewey, you know, yeah, the Dewey catalog system. 
Okay, so uh, Sadie's mom says it's, uh, Sadie's mind is always wandering with a larger than life imagination. She's forgetful and she's just plain irresponsible. So no, they cannot adopt Dewey. But her moms don't know that Sadie and Dewey can communicate telepathically. And Dewey might be just as misunderstood and lonely as her. So Sadie makes it her mission to rescue the pup, no matter what. And in the magical, heartfelt tradition of classics like Flora and Ulysses, Fish in a Tree, New York Times bestselling author Amber Smith tells an uplifting story about family, friendship, and how when everything seems to fall apart, it might just be serendipity at work. Codename Serendipity, uh, Amber Smith. So those are some of our many, many new books. Just makes barely a, a dent in them. So I hope this just entices you a little bit to come on in and look over our new books and um, pick up a basket and fill it and check them out. Until next time, we'll see you again. I'm Linda Esposito for New Month, New Books here at the Peters Township Public Library.